Gospel of September the 27, 2016, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days for Jesus to be taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there. But they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take a peek of the first reading from the book of Job. Job opened his mouth and cursed his day. Perish the day on which I was born, the night when they said, The child, the child is a boy. Why did I not perish at birth? Come forth from the womb and expire. For then I should have lain down and been tranquil. Had I slept, I should have been, be I should have been at rest with kings and counselors of the earth, who built where now they are ruins, or with princes who had gold and filled their houses with silver. Why, light, why is light given to the toilers, and life to the bitter in spirit? They wait for death, and it comes not. They search for it rather than for hidden treasures. And whom God has hemmed in. We see a, a tremendous a stark contrast of Job. God himself praises him. Yet his answer during tribulation is not the best. He's cursing the day that he was born. Why was I born? Why was I alive? I, I should have been better off not born at all because he was suffering greatly. We like to, especially in our Western tradition, the Catholic Western tradition, we like to exalt in blessings. If we have children, if our businesses are, go are doing well, if everything is fine, then we're happy. Hey, this is well. Life is great. But whenever we are having a little bit of trouble, then we immediately start to complain with God. Why have you forsaken me? Why am I going in this? And yet we are not able to see the Via Crucis, the way of the cross. It is a stark as, contrast, as I said. What do we see in the Gospel? We see the only man on earth who was born to die. To die for you and me. Why? We all were born to live. But the eternal word, the eternal law was, was incarnated to die. That was his purpose. To die so that in his death he might, he might kill death. Pardon me my saying. He might abolish death. So he was born to be dead. He was born to die for you and me on the cross. And what is his reaction? By this time, he knows that in Jerusalem, death awaits him. Great suffering. He knows that. And yet, the writer, Luke, writes, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem. And it is marvelous to contemplate the human will of the Lord, of Jesus of Nazareth, resolutely determined to journey to his pain and death. How many of us would rather run away from that, rather plead and plead and cry to God? But he knew and he loved. And that is the contrast. The true servant of the Lord, of God, is only the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other. 
but even Job, not any other, only the Lord Jesus Christ, out of love. It was not because the Father demanded him that he should be dead. It was not because he was left alone, given up by the Father, that he had to be killed. No, he had not. He was able and free all the time. Let us never forget that Jesus of Nazareth never stopped being God. He could have not done what happened to him. He could have not let anyone touch them, touch him. Yet he allowed it. Both in his divine and in his human conscience, without mixture. So he shows us the path to follow. He determined resolutely to go to Jerusalem and fulfill his, his part. So he sent ahead of him messengers that they might prepare him places to remain, houses to be welcomed. And this Samaritan village did not want to, to welcome him because they told them that they, he was going to Jerusalem. And Samaritans were upset against the Jews. And now we have these two brothers, James and John, asking the Lord, Do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? How foolish them, how foolish of them, forgive me, Lord, for saying this, but how foolish. It is not by the force that God wants us to follow him, but rather by love. God himself could force us all, not only the Samaritans, but all of us, to follow his path. But then we would not be free. We would not be doing it out of love. And if we are not free and we are not doing it out of love, it's not good. It's not worth it. But only love can be worthy of the love that we receive from our Father. Only love will not deny our freedom and yet make us truly free by adhering to the will of our Father. Out of love. So there we have it. The dire contrast between even Job and our Lord Jesus Christ. And then another with James and John. Where did you stand? Let us at least humbly pray to our Father, our brother Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit, that He might, that they might, that He might strengthen us in the faith, that we might answer in love, freely, in whatever circumstance we live by the grace of God. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.